Hello, today we're going to be looking at lab one, and for the most part, this is a bunch of basic functions. So I'm looking at sheet one, basic formulas. I refer to these as the big five. They're the most commonly used formulas, common enough that they are on the home tab. Never mind that, that's just a thing. All right, so they're here under this auto sum button. If you just click that, you're going to get addition or uh, sum every time, which is not what you want. You want to pull that down. Sum, average, count, max, min. These should be formulas that you are familiar with. Uh, they do what they sound like they do for the most part. However, that's not really what this sheet is about. I'm going to head here. I'm going to do an average, right? So auto sum, average. So notice the range, the specified range, which is incorrect, of course. It stops in row 22. It should go all the way up to row 1. So the moral of the story here is when you select a formula, you want to also select the range like that. When I'm done, I press enter, or I press checkbox. That's correct. Let me head down to count. So here's count numbers. Notice the same problem here, but I have even more problems now because I'm getting this in there. So as always, it's my responsibility to, to select the range. Press enter, done. Now we're doing max, right? So here's max. It's getting even worse, right? I don't want this. I do want to go to the top. Notice the way I'm doing it. There's many ways to do formulas. I'm going to do them like this. And I'll show you another technique in the next one. Here's min. Notice I'm getting all that junk in there. It's always my job to resize the range. Here's a sum. Always my job to select the range manually. So that's one way of doing it. If you're good at the click and drag with the mouse, that's probably the best way to do it. Um, if you're better at typing, there's no reason you can't just type these out. Equals average. And then our range is from C3 to C48. All right, if you're a good data entry person, well, that's a good way to do it. Notice I didn't have to capitalize them, uh, right? And there's no reason I couldn't just do equals count of C3 to C48. This works pretty fast. Equals min C3 through C48. Notice I'd say this is faster than what I was doing before. Equals, oops, I think I did a, I think I did a min there, did I? Yeah, so let's say, oh, I made a mistake, and I did make a mistake. Well, uh, rather than deleting everything, how about I just go up here and, oops, right, make it into a max. Easier than writing the whole thing from scratch. So with C3 to C48, and equals sum of C3 to C48. Notice I'm not telling you how to enter your formulas. Uh, I don't care how you enter your formulas. You want to type them out? Fine. If you want to just use your mouse, that's fine. Myself, I actually do kind of a hybrid. I go like this. I go. Actually, I write equals average, opening parenthesis, and then I swipe the range. So I just completely dismiss the idea that I'm going to rely at all on my computer to help me out here. So I'll show you that again. So it's going to be equals count, and then I just do a big swipe because I know I'm going to swipe the data. Right, equals max. I know this is a pretty brutal video to watch because it's a lot of repetition. That's the point of this sheet, though, making sure that you spend some time uh, writing formulas. Equals min. Right, is this the best way to do it? I don't know. It's a way to do it. It's how I like to do it. So I write the formula because finding them can be a pain. And then I manually drag around the data. Uh, there's a lot of ways to do this. Some people just zoom out, right? Because if you can zoom out enough, then you can do everything in one big swipe, which is kind of cool. And you can also see the problems very clearly. So that's kind of good. And count. And I'm just going to stop here because I've now showed you all my, fa my favorite techniques for entering data. Of course, there's named ranges as well. Um, just kind of this video is already four minutes long and I've done the first sheet, so I'm not trying to do any more than I have to. You should, though. Those are the basic formulas. Financial information. So this isn't about the sum or average or anything like that. My idea is that if you are going to add up two things, then yeah, you could use a sum function, but you can also just write a formula like that. Once you've got a formula, you should be able to fill handle it. Current total is going to be that times that. I'm working quick. Chance of me making a mistake is very real. Equals that minus that. You notice I'm sit not sitting here talking about all the formulas because I'm just giving you something to look at. This is just a solution video. I'm trying to not make this a 30-minute video. It's already going to be pretty long. 
but at least it gives you something to look at, right? There was that formula. There's that formula. There's that formula. And then we start getting into the tables, and this is the part I'd like to talk about a little bit more because this is the part we haven't officially got to in our text. So top 10 drivers by money. So this big data set here. If you scroll up, you'll see that it already has filters on it, so that's kind of good. Filters are enabled and disabled under the data tab right here. Right, those just come and go as you need them. This is typically associated with tables, but it doesn't have to be. Top 10 drivers by money. So here's money. If you want top 10, it would be a big mistake to just check boxes down here. You always want to use number filters if you can. And there's top 10. There you go. That's a classic example of a filter. Notice the data is still there. The rows are still there. They're just being hidden. So that's that. NASCAR 2. So bottom 20s based on points. Another filter question. They're enabled. Here's points. We want bottom 20. Notice I don't see bottom 20. I do see top 10, and that ends up being the closest we can do. And sure enough, this flips to bottom. And you can either spin that up to 20, or you can just type in 20. I go OK. There we go, filtered. Um, one thing I didn't do is, I don't know if that's 10 names, looks like about 10. It looks like about 20. Sometimes when you filter information, you might end up with more or less than you expect, and that would be due to a tie. If you had less than 20, that'd be a problem, but if you had 21 or 22, that would just indicate a tie, which is fine. NASCAR 3, so sort the driver name, driver list by last name, by driver name, and display only the top five. So they're already sorted by name, but let's show you how to do that. The easiest way to sort is under filters. There you go, nothing happened. You can see that it is sorted because of that little thing right there. Uh, top five in the polls. Here's polls, if you want the top five. I'm just gonna go to top 10, and I'm gonna spin that down. Notice this is a good example, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? Why do I have seven people? Well, because three guys are tied in last place. Link one, so this is a pretty basic uh, sheet in terms of what it is. So create a reference in the yellow cell that links to cell B48. So this is just the idea of, hey, I'm on link one and I want to link to something in basic formula. So if you want to link, you type equals, uh, click on the sheet that you want and click on the cell that you want. B48 is the one I'm asking for. So I click here. Now notice that kind of weird syntax up there. Just press enter. That's what it looks like, right? So this is saying, hey, point to the particular worksheet and in that worksheet, point to that cell. And you get that, right? It's just the contents of whatever was in that cell. And then from here, we just got two more financial sheets, payment one, payment two. So this is one of those things. It's just, um, I will take some time to talk about it. So monthly payment. So this is the first time we're using a, I don't know, a formula, which is not one of the big five. This one lives in the financial group. You gotta scroll down to PMT, right? Short for payment. We're trying to figure out a monthly payment here. This looks like a mortgage or car loan, or I don't know what these are, it doesn't matter. So the rate. The rate, you always wanna to point to the cell. Do not type it in ever. We'll mark it wrong. Uh, and so here's the tricky thing here. If it's a monthly payment, then that means there's 12 months in a year or 12 payments in a year, so I need to divide that by 12, right? I have to write it like that. N per, this is where I'm gonna go years. Uh, times 12, right? So the thing you divide by in the, I wrote that wrong. The thing that you divide by is the same thing that you're gonna multiply by. This does change. And PV, that's the amount of the loan. And that's how you set it up. These are for more advanced situations, which we're not covering right now. And I get something like that, saying that, hey, if I'm gonna borrow $2,000 at five and a quarter percent interest rate, and I'm gonna pay it back over a year, well, those are gonna be my monthly payment. Let's look at this guy. They're all gonna be really similar, this sheet in particular. So the rate is here. It's monthly, so I'm gonna divide it by 12. The years are here. I'm gonna divide it by 12, and there's the amount. I press okay, it seems reasonable. Um, head back to PMT, there's a better way to do this, but for now, let's just do it the most straightforward way, which is this. Here's the rate, divide it by 12. Here's the year times 12, and here's the amount. I am pressing tab to jump through those dialog through those fields quickly. Another one, it's gonna be pretty repetitive. Here's the rate, 
divided by 12, here's the years, times 12, and here's the amount. Now these were all monthly, and that's why we have 12s in all of them. Now you might notice that that's red, and it's got uh, parentheses around it. That means it's a negative number. Um, I don't particularly have an explanation for that. Just know that PMT, by default, will give you a negative number. Some folks like to put a negative sign in front of it, which makes it into a positive. I don't care. Uh, I'm perfectly fine with the formula spitting out what it's supposed to. Some people like to make adjustments just to make it a positive number, but if it's negative, that's normal. If it's not negative, and you, right, you can do whatever you want to do, just be consistent. Payment 2, this one's more interesting. So these are payment payments again, so PMT functions. Rate is here, and there's every other month. So the question you have to ask yourself is if you're making a payment every other month, how many payments are you going to make? Well, you're going to make six of them, so I'm going to divide it by six. Here's my years times six. Notice those numbers are always the same. And the value is that. I click OK. Done. Uh, another one. So let's do a payment again. We're doing every four months. So my rate's here. So I'm making a payment every four months. I'm going to make three of those per year. So it's divided by three. Years times three. Amount is there. Bi-monthly, so this is the strange one, and bi-monthly means three different things in the real world, so we just have to come to an agreement, and we'll talk about that. So in this class, bi-monthly means 24. So rate is here, divided by 24. Um, years is here, times 24, values here. So bi-monthly can mean a lot of different things, I get that. If you disagree with 24, that's fine, we just have to come up with something consistent and so I'm gonna say 24 in this class but in other contexts it might mean different things now I'm gonna show you that you can write these by hand if you want to equals PMT uh, there's my rate divide by quarterly which means four comma separates those arguments years times four comma to separate the argument click on that and that's certainly not easier to do, and I wouldn't particularly suggest that you write them out by hand, but just to see how they're structured, you might learn something from it. So, name of the function, parentheses. This is the first dialog box, this is the second dialog box, and this is the third dialog box. You see, you get some little tips right there telling you how to do it. That was the lab, and that does a pretty good job of covering the things that we did this week. So, while tables was loosely a topic, it was more about filtering. The table is just a way to make data look like something, right? If I wanted to make this into a table, let me clear these filters first. If you want to make something into a table, well, you just make it into a table. But uh, to me, the most significant thing about a table, in this course at least, is the idea that it has filters. But also notice you don't have to have a table to have filters. We'll talk more about tables later on, but for now, filters is the takeaway. Uh, there's the PMT formula, and we did a lot of just basic formulas and uh, right, just kind of putting those together. So thanks for watching.